Right now, though, we go to the Boomer Jacks Bar and Grill Hotline where we welcome in the managing editor for the Cowboys Wire for USA Today. He is KD Drummond. KD, what's going on? What's up, fellas? How y'all been? Um, let me ask you something real quick. Doing real good. I'm going to ask you something real quick. How many times has Patrick Walker called you about what's happening in these MLB playoffs? Wow. So I, I don't know what's happening in the MLB playoffs. So <laughs> you decided just to turn it off altogether, huh? Yeah, I, I've opted out. Okay. For how long? Like, is is that like a is is that like when the computer pops up and they're like, you can opt out for one hour, two hour, four hours? <laughs> how long did you opt out? Because uh, your nationals aren't looking. Oof. Je- that's what I'm about to say, gentlemen. Have you seen our roster? I'm, I'm <laughs> well, a roster that looks like it's going to have its starting five on the offensive line for the first time in quite some time uh, is the Dallas Cowboys. What were your thoughts when you saw the news come through that it appears? Tyra Smith, Tyler, Tyler, and Zach, and uh, Terrence Steele, there that's right, mm-hmm. are all going to play on Sunday against the San Francisco 49ers. It, it is absolutely beautiful news. Uh, it's been a very long time. I forgot the total number of games. That's how long it's been. It's been uh, many games since the Cowboys had their entire offensive line together. I think they went all of 2022 without their offensive line, their starting five, intended starting five. Uh, every game this year. So it, it's been a long time, and I'm just hopeful we can get through these last, you know, tomorrow's practice, the walkthrough on Saturday, and everybody makes it through healthy because the Cowboys have been known for getting some late-week injuries that have kind of derailed their plan for the for the uh, game day. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be tremendous to have everybody back together. Uh, we know how well Teron uh, Smith was playing to start the season uh, before his, his knee gave him some trouble uh, we know what the rest of the line does as far as Zach Martin, uh, Terrence Steele in the run game, Tyler Biotish being the enforcer now. You know, who saw that coming? He, he's the mean guy on the offensive line. Uh, and Tyler Smith is just doing incredible when it comes to run blocking at left guard. So it's very, it, it's very much needed because this San Francisco uh, 49ers defensive front is a, a bunch of animals, man, and they really need to be on their best behavior in order to, to keep Dak upright. Now, KD, I know that I've been pretty fascinated about the idea of the ways that this this offense has decided to attack, the ph- philosophical change that you've been able to see. And one thing I've been talking about on this very show is kind of how this team has been middle of the road when it comes to getting explosive plays, chunk plays. Is that something that concerns you? Where have you where have you landed seeing the the implementation of the Tex Coast offense through four weeks? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not too concerned about the chunk plays. I mean, obviously, it's not where you want it to be. Uh, I put out my advanced stat notebook earlier today. Uh, the Cowboys have 11 explosive passing plays, which are 20 yards or more, uh, 13 explosive runs, and that's not bad. It's a very good total, especially when you consider that they're not turning the ball over. Uh, it's not, you know, top of the league. The 49ers have uh, 15 explosive passing plays, 18 explosive runs. So there's obviously room for improvement. Uh, but one of the things that I found in my in my research for this game is that uh, the Texas Coast offense is not throwing the ball downfield. Dak Prescott ranks 34 out of 34 quarterbacks in the NFL when it comes to air yards. He's averaging 5.5 yards an attempt. That's abysmal. Uh, but his success in his passing does not reflect somebody that normally has that low of an air yardage uh, average. He is very, very good at what he does. The Cowboys have success in the game everywhere but the red zone. Uh, and not just, you know, minimal success. They have a lot of success. Dak Prescott leads the NFL, or the Cowboys, I should say, lead the NFL in third down conversion over expected. And what that basically says is when you put the Cowboys in whatever third down distance in the game situation, they are performing basically 12% better than the average team would in those exact same situations. So they're coming through when it comes to their chances on offense. It's just not resulting in touchdowns when you get to the red zone. My prevailing theory is that they just didn't spend as much time as they needed to on red zone implementation. And by middle of the season, end of the season, hopefully by Sunday night, they'll have straightened out some of those things and they can get touchdowns out of those drives. But we see the Cowboys be very successful on offense. Uh, and, and, yeah, so things have changed. They're not just throwing the ball downfield. We thought with Brandon Cooks that was going to open up the deep game. We thought uh, you know, Turpin was going to be more of a factor in, in opening up things downfield. But that just does not seem to be what this offense is geared to do right now. Does that concern you moving forward then with the use of Brandon Cooks and what that looks like with him in this offense for the Cowboys? 
I think it'll come along eventually. Um, you know, we, we saw CeeDee Lamb, obviously a CeeDee Lamb, and he's been that way since week one of the season. And it took a couple of weeks for Michael Gallup to get going. And now that Michael Gallup is going, I figure the next step in that evolution is going to be Brandon Cooks. Uh, we saw a little bit of Tolbert in this last game showing up more than he has at any point in his career. So I think Dak is capable of spreading the ball around. And everybody remembers what we saw in training camp. You know, Brandon Cooks was featured. He was getting behind the defense. He was doing what he's done at every stop along his career when he's had six different 1,000-yard receiving seasons. Uh, the chemistry was there in the offseason. Uh, but, again, with football, it's always funny because it's such a small sample size, right? You only have 17 regular season games. We've only been through four of them. And things could easily turn around, you know, in this game and a couple games from now, and all of this will be a distant memory that they're not going deep. I think that, you know, there, there, a, lot of, a lot of talk was paid to, oh, we've only changed the offense 30%. But they've changed a lot about what Dak Prescott does in the pocket. His footwork is markedly different than it has been in the past. And I just think they were focused on other things when it comes to this offense. And as the season gets further into it, some of the other things that they plan to do will eventually come around. We're talking to KD Drummond, the managing editor of Cowboys Wire, right here on 105.3 The Fan. And KD, I, I'm personally fairly negative, especially when you get to games like this, because I'm looking at all the things that could possibly go wrong. But I feel like to, to inject a little bit of positivity into my own personal, um, you know, kind of feelings. Where are the places in this game, in this matchup, that you have a lot of um, a lot of high expectations for the Cowboys against the Niners? I love the fact of how Dan Quinn has spent the first four weeks sending Michael Parsons from everywhere. And I know his sack total wasn't big in this last game, but he had like nine pressures. Uh, there are holes in this San Francisco offensive line. They're, you're not going to get many wins against Trent, Trent Williams uh, against him, but I think Parsons might get a win or two there. But on the right side of the line, I think that that's, you know, a, a, a time to feast. I think the Cowboys have enough playmakers along that defensive line that they are going to be able to give – uh, San Francisco some fits when it comes to that. Uh, I think that San Francisco secondary is suspect outside of their safety. Um, Shavarius Ward is a little bit banged up. He's their top cornerback, you know, former Cowboys, Shavarius Ward. So I think that there are places that you can win against San Francisco. Their defense is nothing like it was under D'Amico Ryans last year. They were number one in basically every category. Um, this year, they are, they are not that. They are giving up, um, you know, uh, chunk plays and, and – um, not chunk plays, sorry, excuse me. They don't give up a bunch of big plays, but they give up positive yardage. They give up success, successful plays where you're getting, you know, more than 40% uh, of what's necessary on first down, more than 60% on second down. San Francisco is not a very good, six, quote, unquote, success rate defense. Mm -hmm. So I think the Cowboys are going to have opportunities to make plays. It's what happens after they get the ball in their hands that's, that's really going to be on them. So you're going to want to get the ball to CeeDee Lamb on those crossing routes, on those slants. Um, there, there's going to be opportunities there for Tony Pollard. I don't think they're a very stout run defense that they have been in the past. I think they're actually in the bottom third of the league uh, when it comes to advanced metrics against the run. Uh, so I think that there are opportunities for the Cowboys to win in those areas. Uh, and, and, I mean, let's be honest. We're just looking for better offensive performance than what we've seen in the last two playoff games. Everybody has that horrible taste in their mouth for how the offense has looked. And this is going to be the litmus test. They have, you know, they've, they've tried it out for four weeks. They've, they've seen what has worked. And I promise you this coaching staff has had this game circled on their calendar when they want to pull out all the stops. Now, if they come out in this game and against this, you know, lesser than San Francisco defense than we've seen in the past and all of this buildup and they, you know, can't compete and they, and they can't get their offense uh, untracked, then it's going to be time to worry about what this team can ultimately be. But I think they, they, I think they have the possibility of having a good showing on Sunday night, man, and they do well under the lights. Uh, I, I have a lot of confidence in the Cowboys for this game, and that's not something that I thought I would have at the beginning of the season at this point. Uh, it's not what I felt after the Arizona game, but I think the Cowboys can do some damage on Sunday night. Yeah, and just, just to kind of help you out there, the Niners are t ranked 20th when it comes to success rate defensively, so that's obviously yep. you know right in that at the bottom part of that middle uh, third of the league, and then they're 28th when it comes to rush EPA, which is firmly in the bottom third. Uh, defensively in the league. Go. So, yeah, no, you can run on them and they they allow successful plays. Maybe that uh, dink and dunk offense can continue right up the field on them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all going to be what they do once they get in the red zone. Like, I mean, there there's no, uh, there, there's no other way to frame this for the Cowboys to have success. They simply have to figure out how to get it done in the red zone. And let's not, you know, sugarcoat it. 
they've had a bunch of drops. The tight ends aren't doing their job in the red zone. There's multiple mm. plays where he's hit these tight ends and he should have four or five touchdowns if they did their job and caught the ball. We need these young tight ends to come through in this game. If they don't, it might be more of a struggle, uh, but th- that's the place that they can win in this game. Katie, can the winner of this game lay claim to being the, calling themselves the best team in the National Football League through five weeks? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just because, you know, Philly hasn't played anybody. Buffalo has the, the strongest win right now. Um, in my weekly power rankings, I had Miami number one going into last week. After that, uh, Shellac and they put on the Denver Broncos. So Buffalo took that crown and that bumped San Francisco up to number one for me. Uh, Dallas right now is number five, right behind Philly at number four. Um, with Buffalo and Kansas City in between. But I, I think that if the Cowboys go into this game on the road on Sunday night and exercise those demons, how would you not say that they're, you know, the the, the reigning champ of the NFL at this at this juncture of the season? Katie, real quick, I'm going back to the negativity. Um, the Cowboys, <laughs> when it comes to um, the successful places in that defense where teams can attack them, throwing over the middle is a place where – they are susceptible, and that's funny enough where Kyle Shanahan offenses like to attack. Um, how are you viewing that matchup um, in particular? I am a big Malik Hooker fan in general. I am not pleased with what I've seen out of him so far this year. So I have concern about that over the middle. I have a concern about the deep middle with Hooker patrolling that center field. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at Leighton Van Der Esch, We're looking at Damone Clark dropping back into coverage. That is definitely the weak spot of the Cowboys' defense. We knew what it was entering in the, into the year, uh, that the linebacker core was a little bit depleted. I think that Dan Quinn had big plans for Overshown, uh, but he got injured. He tore his ACL, so he's out. And as much as I like what uh, my pet cat Marquise Bell does in his place, I, I think they're still susceptible to that over the middle. So, yeah, I expect to see Debo running across there. I expect to see Ayuk on those crossing patterns. Uh, let's face it. I mean, Kyle Shanahan is a absolute mastermind when it comes to devising his offense, uh, and it's been in place for a while. He has the longevity and his uh, of his system being known by his players, and they know where those weak spots are. They know how to attack them, and I expect that to be the case on uh, Sunday night. The question is whether or not the pass rush can get there. If the pass rush can get there, all plans go to go to waste. It's like what Mike Tyson says. You know, everybody has a plan until you get hit in the mouth. Mm-hmm. That's what it's going to take. We have to get to Brock Purdy so that he's uncomfortable, uh, similar to how he was in that playoff game. I mean, you know, he didn't have a great playoff game against the Cowboys. It's just that the Cowboys' offense was inept, and, and they weren't able to do anything when they had the ball. But the Cowboys have shown the ability to stop this San Francisco offense. They just need to do it again on Sunday night. Should be one hell of a matchup between two old rivals in the NFC, between the Cowboys and the 49ers. We kick off at 720 in Santa Clara, California. You can find him on Twitter at KD Drummond NFL. He is the managing editor for the Cowboys Wire for USA Today. He is KD Drummond. KD, as always, appreciate the time, sir. Good to hear from you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you, Jen. Y'all have a good one. 